Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome back for another episode. This is Frank Agan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing and thanks for referring others. Today is another guest day for us. For those who are a, a consistent listeners, you know that from time to time, it's me talking and sharing and other times I will get awesome people on people who are industry experts uh, talking with us. And today is one of those days. Um, today we have on Tiffany Kellogg and she is an, an entrepreneur and she's been an entrepreneur since 2003. And she has helps her, her clients make more money, save time and have fun. Um, she spends her time traveling across the globe, helping thousands of entrepreneurs create amazing businesses and really have spectacular lives through her keynote presentations and workshops and online programs, more online programs now than anything with the, in, the, in this COVID world. Um, but uh, whether she's sharing her expertise, uh, and you'll notice that she does have an accent, um, uh, her sharing her expertise on referral marketing, networking, or maximizing your time, uh, Tiffany will knock your socks off. Uh, um, and uh, when I say knock your socks off, you have to go see her LinkedIn profile, see her website. She's into socks. So she sent me a nice postcard and there's socks all over it. Uh, but she, she shared with me that her goal is to help people achieve their dreams by giving them the tools needed to make more money in less time so they can have more fun. She's also the author of, of a couple of books, um, The Four and a Half Networking Mistakes, Maximize Your Networking Efforts by Avoiding Common Mistakes. Um, and then knock the socks off your audience, delivering presentations with power and passion to audiences large and small, and then socks to success, being memorable, branding to generate more referrals. Tiffany, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here, Frank. Now, all right, tell me about the sock thing. I, I, I want to hear the whole story, but the sock thing for sure. So start in the beginning. <laughs> so the, the Clip Notes version of the sock thing um, I liked fun holiday socks and my sister used to make fun of me uh, for okay. wearing them. And then one year she decided for Christmas, she was just, she went into the, to Amazon and put in ugly socks and they were these oh. super cute unicorn socks. And I'm like, Oh, these are fun. Um, and then my, I started getting more and more socks. And my husband's like, you know what we should do? You should wear each pair of socks once and see how long it, long it takes you to get through all your socks and how many pairs you had. So I started in October of 2015, I believe, and I ended up going till March of 2017 with wow. 301 pairs of socks. Now, I didn't start with that many, uh, though I, I ended up with that many, and I have a way more than that now. But uh, when you see me out and about, we can't see each other in the yeah. virtual world, but I always have on socks, usually with some Converse. And so even if I've got on like a dress or I'm at a networking event, with some black slacks, you can see the the fun socks, and people see the socks and they think of me. And that's your thing. And that's my thing. And if we think about referrals, if people are thinking about you more than just here's your brand or your company or your business, they're thinking about you more. They're more likely to refer you. Yeah. So people will send me photos of sock stores or the sock display at a store, or they'll send me socks or they'll send me articles about socks, and so it helps keeps me type of mind top of mind, which helps get me referrals. No, it's, I think that's, I think that's smart. I wish I'd have known my, uh, my son was, uh, he's a sophomore in college now, but he was selling things on eBay and he found a whole buttload of, uh, Fortnite socks. And so oh, he, wow. <laughs> he, he bought them and was going to sell them one off on eBay. And then Fortnite said, no, you can't do that. So he had oh. all these socks. <laughs> um, so what he finally did, he did, um, at the holidays was he just posted something up on Facebook. Hey, is there any parents out there who would love to give their kids a pair of socks? And of course yeah. they went just like that. So, <laughs> Oh, well, um, what, what right, an that, interesting world we live in. It is. It is. Uh, so that's the sock story. Uh, yeah. uh, how about the rest of it? How, how'd you get to this point in time? You've written three books. You, you know, work, we're going to, we're certainly want, I want to talk with you about referrals, 
Um, but how'd you get into all of this? Yeah, so interestingly enough, like I had no intention when I was growing up of owning my own business or being a professional speaker. I, I was in school, but I, I went to college as a biology major. And then I figured out like everything that was involved and what I wanted to be yeah. growing up. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to switch. The school had a really amazing business school. So I'm like, I'm going to switch, become a business major uh, and, and go that route. And I did. And then I got out of school, got that first really amazing job. You know, you got the benefits, the perks, the paid vacation. It was all going well. Though in March of 2003, two things happened to impact me being here today. Uh, the first, the job that I had, the board of directors got together, did some restructuring, and guess what was no longer part of the organization? You. <laughs> My position. So they very yeah. nicely offered me a severance package or a demotion. Okay. The second thing that happened that month, uh, my mom, who had been battling breast cancer for the previous 17 months, uh, she was given a terminal diagnosis uh, and maybe a couple weeks left to live. So I took the severance package and it was such a brilliant thing because I got to spend each and every day with my mom. Um, she, she hung on more than a couple weeks. She actually hung on. We were able to celebrate her 47th birthday. We had a whole bunch of people that were there. Um, and then she passed away a couple days later. And I was left with, I have no job and I've lost my mom. What am I going to do with my life? And I, I liked the freedom and the flexibility I had when I was unemployed. I get it. You know, no job. Yeah. Uh, but there was a friend of the family that she had her own business and her hours were so much more flexible. So I'm like, I want to have my own business. I want that flexibility. So I picked up and moved to Florida, started a business. And what I found is just because you have a business doesn't mean you have any business. Right. <laughs> and I didn't know about networking and referral marketing. So I spent the next two years cold calling and I'm good at it and I hate it. Yeah. I was like, this is, this is miserable. I don't like this at all. And then I got a random phone call, somebody out of the phone book that tells you how long ago this was. They called me out of the phone book right. and said, Hey, you want to come to this networking event? And I fell in love with networking and I fell in love with referrals. And I spent the next couple of years like going out there and reading all the books. I mean, this is when I used to go to the library to get the yeah. books. Yeah. There wasn't as much, uh, there's some on the internet, but not as much as there was, there is now. Um, and so I was researching and I was doing all this stuff. And there's some things that the experts tell you to do that can create some results, but I ended up working seven days a week and I was making enough money to pay the bills and, you know, put food on the table, but I was working all the time. And so I started some trial and error, uh, trying to look deeper into the knowledge out there. And I found that there's just this better way of doing networking and referral marketing. And I, I got so good at it in my business and then I'm able to do that. And I'm like, I really had a passion for helping others. Cause to me, we never know how much time we're going to have left. Right. And I, I went to, into being an entrepreneur cause I wanted that flexibility and freedom that, that being my own business owner could give me. However, I was working all the time and I see right. so many business owners that are like married to their job. And so my goal is I want to help people have the flexibility and the freedom to do the things that they love now. Cause we don't know how much time we have. Right. Well, I mean, referrals are, referrals are a beautiful thing. I mean, cause, because referrals, I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but <laughs> I just think they're, they're great because they happen in the background. You know, when you're cold calling, I mean, you've got to be on. If you, <sighs> I mean, you're, if you're not dialing, if you're not knocking on doors or whatever, you know, sending letters, whatever you're doing, um, it's not moving forward. Nope. But with, with the referral thing, I mean, you don't know. It's something that can come out of the blue and just, hey, talk to this person. Um, <laughs> to, to me, I think referral marketing actually needs to be renamed relationship marketing. Yeah. Because it's about the relationships that you develop with your referral sources so that when they're, when they're not in front of you behind the scenes, they're working on your behalf and you don't even know it. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, that you're very, it, it, that's very true. In fact, I've, I've had people who have uh, chided me corrected me on, you know, LinkedIn messages saying, you know, it's not networking, it's building relations. We call it building relationships. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm using a bad word. I get it. But, um, but <laughs> well, no, I told to me, I think networking is, I actually think networking and referral marketing are slightly different things. To me, networking is where I go to meet the people and get to know them. So then I can move into the referral marketing, the relationship marketing to make it work. No, I, I, and I don't disagree. I guess it's, uh, it's all semantics more or less. Um, but no, I, I, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> um, so you help people get referrals. Uh, yeah. let's talk about how, 
how we can, you know, your, your advice, I don't expect you to give away everything, uh, <laughs> by the book. Um, but how do you motivate your referral network to help you generate more referrals? Yeah. So I, I've got, I could, you know, we could talk 30 or 40 yeah. different techniques. We're not, you know, we've got a, a time frame here. Uh, but I think there's things that we can do to, to motivate the folks in our network, though, to take kind of a step back before we think about, okay, how do I motivate my network? I think we need to think about who's in our network. And yeah. sometimes people will be like, well, I'm a member of, you know, a group or I'm part of this company. To me, when it comes to your referral relationships, it's individual relationships. So one thing I might recommend to those people listening is jot down right now uh, a list of who are your top 12 referral sources. So these are actually people's names and maybe it's only four or five. But as we go through these tips on how to motivate, keep in mind a specific person versus sometimes I'm like, oh, well, this company passes me 20 referrals a month. Well, you can't get referrals from a company. Right. You get referrals from people inside of the company. And so we have to think about these as relationships. Because one of the things that I think is really powerful and a way to motivate, the number one of the ones I'll give you all today is picking up the phone and making a how are you doing phone call. So the purpose of this is simple. You pick up the phone, you call somebody up and you say, how are you doing? I think that's totally genius. I was talking to a financial advisor, a big city financial advisor uh, in this whole COVID thing. And she was commiserating. I'm running out of things to talk about, right? Well, stop talking about financial advising. You know, how are these people doing? And, and don't even put on the back end. Hey, oh, by the way, I do this. Don't, you know, how are you doing? Right. Yeah, because people are like, well, what's my agenda? And I'm like, that's your agenda. How yeah. are you doing? Yeah. Now, if you happen to be calling somebody that's a talker and you're afraid that they're going to be like five hours later, uh, you could always say, hey, you know, Frank, I was thinking about you. I just have two or three minutes before my next meeting, but I wanted to call and say, how are you doing? Yeah. And then that way you're not stuck for hours. You know, it's it's interesting. When I used to be an attorney and I worked for a big firm and my boss always said, just go stop off at your clients just go stop off and say hello and I thought that was the rudest thing ever until I did it um, and I showed up and you know hey Stephanie I'm just here to I was in the air I just stopped in to say hello and hey while you're here you know so I came out of there with an assignment it wasn't a huge assignment we need you to help with this oh wow you know this works mm -hmm. yeah and it's interesting because sometimes people will have that oh isn't that rude and I'm of the mindset if I'm calling you and you answer the phone, you're take, you, you have permission to, you know, to ask how you're doing. Um, yeah. Though occasionally people will be like, I'm in the middle of something. And I'm like, just call me back. Yeah. No, no big deal. No hurry. Uh, if I'm calling somebody, uh, I'm the type, I won't call you back if you don't leave me a voicemail. Uh, but my voicemail will just be, hey, Frank, I was thinking about you. wanted to see how you're doing. Call me when you get a chance. Right. That way it's not this race to, you know, call back. Now, sometimes people ask, can I send a how are you doing text? or social media message. And I just don't think it has the same oomph. Oh, I totally agree. And I, I, I love the idea of the face-to-face -face stop by, just A, not to somebody's house randomly. Businesses are different once right. COVID is, is done. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I think the texts are okay. And I'm just speaking from my experience, when I get a text, if it's somewhat personal, if yeah. it's, you know, hey, happy Thanksgiving, you know it's gone out to a thousand other people, you know, it's the equivalent of that pre-printed Christmas card. You know, right. It just doesn't have the feel to it. But if somebody says, you know, hey, how are you doing? Where are you watching the game today? Or something, I know that it's mine. Right. There's something more to it. it but I, Yeah. It's all personalization. Correct. Yeah. And so I'm not saying like text or social media is not bad. I use them. I just don't think it's as impactful as the, ha the call or the yeah. stop by once we can. Yeah, no, I totally, I totally get it. Yeah. Oh, it's I interesting though that you mentioned cards. Can I go to number two? Oh yeah. No yeah. particular order, but you mentioned cards. So I think sending people cards or sending them a gift can be a, a really great way to stay in touch, to stay top of mind. Now, what types of gifts are you advocating? Um, I'm a huge fan of socks. No, if I know that. If they're, if they're <laughs> gifts for me, I like socks. However, um, I don't think that's a good like across the board gift. I think. If you're sending somebody a gift, if you know them and you know them well, it's a much more powerful thing if you send them something that you want. For example, I get a couple Starbucks gift cards a year. I don't do Starbucks. I don't mm. do coffee. I'm like, I can't imagine me caffeinated when this is me. 
naturally. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, I mean, my husband's happy when people give me Starbucks gift card because I just pass them on to him, but it right. doesn't make an impact. Uh, I, I love it when people give me socks. Uh, my husband and I are also really big into craft beer. So people will travel and bring beer back that we can't get here in the state. And that means way more and probably spends way less than, you know, here's a 50 or $100 gift card to a, a local restaurant. And so I think if you can get to know a person or know more about them and send them a personalized gift. And I mean, I'm not saying personalized, like it has to have their name on it. Right. Uh, but if it's something that they like, it makes a huge difference. Well, it's, I totally agree. I, I was kind of, for years, I've sent people a copy of my book. Um, and I had another gentleman on Matt Ward, who's similar, does similar things to you. Um, he kind of enlightened me to it says, yeah, when you send him a book, it's almost like, it's almost like you're pitching them. You're not, uh, you know, that's not my intent, but that's how it can right. come across. And he shared some stories about things, people doing things for him or him doing things for other people that were very personal in nature. Um, and it just, you know, back to the text thing, it's personalized. Oh my gosh. You were, right. you know? Well, and it's one of those things. If we were chatting, I'm like, oh my gosh, I really need to order your book. I, I can't wait. And you send it, then it totally fulfills that. Oh, this is awesome. Versus right. I kind of get where you're coming from. Um, yeah. we would kind of have to watch that though. I think, you know, you can certainly send the gift. It just depends on why you're saying thank you or what's the purpose of the intention. Cause I think we, we all like uh, a nice book in the mail. However, yeah. it, you know, was this a thanks for the referral and maybe we want to give a little something special. Uh, right. if I don't know what the person's into, uh, can I ask other people in their life that know them, whether it's their friends or coworkers, uh, a spouse, if I happen to have those relationships, the other thing is social media is awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for most people, we're sharing at least like you could see what restaurant did they go to that they loved or who do they, who are they hanging out with? What are their activities? Um, and we'd be able to, to customize something for them. Right. No, I think that's, uh, you, you're right. It's a, it, it takes a little bit of work, but I think that's what makes it special. Yes. Is that you have to take it a little bit. And Matt, Matt will point out, he says, it's nothing wrong with sending your book. <laughs> you know, it's just not as good as doing something that, hey, I've, you know, you love chocolate covered bacon or you love socks. That's a whole nother level. Oh, okay. I remember we're listening to that podcast. That was just a couple of <clears throat> weeks ago where they were talking about, the, y'all were talking about the chocolate covered bacon, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. Um, he's got a lot of great stories, but he's, you guys think totally alike with this <laughs> stuff. And um, awesome. Okay. So we got two, right? Yeah. Um, call your clients and send gifts. Yes. Ooh, so this. And, and I wanted to pick out ones that could be done in person or could be done virtually. As sure. you know, 2020, the, the world is a shifting and continuously shifting. Yeah. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd go with the ones that could be done both ways. Uh, third on my list is giving testimonials. Okay. I think giving testimonials can be so very powerful. So many people turn to these success stories as social proof when deciding to hire someone or to purchase a product. And so whether it's you've written the testimonial out on your letterhead old school uh, and printed it out or emailed it to them, whether it's my favorite, I love YouTube videos, like record our Facebook live video, record the video with your, you know, here's the testimonial. When you've gotten the testimonial, then you could also put it on Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Yelp, uh, wherever it is, depending on the type of business that you have. Now, I think there's fluffy testimonials, which are kind of like, oh, he was great. Oh, she was wonderful. Yeah. And then there's testimonials of substance. And those would be, here's what you helped create. Here's the benefit that you got from purchasing from that person. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because I gave a testimonial for uh, somebody's book on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And just the first time it's happened, but it got rejected. And they explain well. They explained it was too fluffy, more or less. They used different words, but you know, it was clear as what they were saying. You know, they wanted me to talk to the substance of the book, not give the book away per se, but just you know what specifically did I like? Because I think they were getting people people farm for those testimonials, um, right. and I didn't intend that, but that's how they saw it. And okay, I'll double back and 
try it again. But <laughs> Yeah, and so I think when you're giving your testimony, you'll get some substance behind it. And not that there's fluff is, it's not that fluff's bad, it's just fluff all by itself, still leaves right. you hungry. So a little substance and a little fluff together is a powerful combination. Right, no, I, totally, totally. Um, call to say hello, gifts, testimonials, one more. One more. Uh, so you know what, no, actually, I want one and a half more. Oh, one. man. Okay. So, so the premise of the book, because it's a four and a half networking mistakes, is that, um, that one of the mistakes is something that the experts only tell you to do sometimes. Okay. So the, the, half, so the networking mistake, number one, is always give out your business card when networking. Right. To me, I think you should only give out your business card when networking when you're asked. And so I don't give out my card unless you ask for it. The right. half mistake is that you only give out your, or you give out multiple business cards. Like, hey, let me give out five business cards so you can refer me. My mindset is if I've just met you for the first time, you're very unlikely to refer me. Yeah. I and think if, I, you, if you want to refer me, you'll give me extra cards. I'll, I'll ask you for them. I think I, I'm totally on board with you because when somebody hands me three cards, it's like, you don't need to do this. Uh, it's not that I won't refer you, but I'm going to put this into my database. And if I refer you, it's going to be an email. Right. Um, and so save it for somebody else. And I feel bad saying that. Like, I'm not going to refer them. I will. I like you. I'm going to help you, but I don't need these. I'm not going to, I'm not going to hang on to them. Um, right. So, okay. All yeah, right. So one, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and it'll be interesting to see when uh, all this is over, if business cards are still a thing or if those are going to be done. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. I hadn't thought about it till just now, but I wonder if we're going to be close to being done with business cards. Uh, you know, we'll be doing fist yeah. bumps and then we'll yeah. be texting each other the cards. Yeah, maybe you're I don't right. Know. Maybe you're okay. right. Last, last one that I have yep. uh, is offering advice. So I think sometimes we, we need help. We need um, advice on things, especially a lot of the people that I work with are either solopreneurs, so they're one of the company, or they're an owner, and while they may have 10, 20, 50, 100 employees, they're kind of isolated, and it's not like they have a lot of people, they can't bounce ideals off of the, the people employed by them the same way. And so I think sometimes turning to your network can be a huge motivator in a couple of ways. Um, you're saying, hey, I trust you. Right. So that's awesome. It says, and also it's kind of an ego stroke. Like, Hey, I need some advice and I'm coming to you about it though. You do have to be careful. So there are kind of a couple rules or things to watch for when asking for advice. Number one, you want to make sure you need the advice you're asking for. Yeah. Don't make it just an ego stroke. Uh, the second thing is you want to let people know, here's what I did with your advice. I followed it because, or I didn't because, uh, give us the feedback of where you're at. Third, Avoid controversial issues. Um, <laughs> there's, there's all kinds of things that, I mean, it's one thing if I, I want to have a conversation with my pastor or my preacher or my rabbi or my marriage counselor. It's another thing to ask somebody in your network some of these more sensitive subjects. So right. be careful about that. Oh, that's good. That's good. And then the um, fourth thing to be concerned on is make sure you're not asking for free advice you should be paying for. No, oh, that's a biggie. Yeah. So I'm a member of the National Speakers Association. So I'm surrounded by people like me and we get paid for what's in our head. And right. so it's not like, here's your, your pizza or here's your flowers. It's, a, it's in the head. And so if I'm talking to somebody that's got that intellectual property that I'm hoping they can advise me on, I will often say, hey, I have a question for you. I don't know if it's a two minute quick answer because we're friends kind of thing or if it's a, I need to pay you for 30 minutes or an hour to sit down and go over this because it's within your expertise. Well, I think it's nice that you offer as opposed yeah. to, you know, they may, they may still give you 30 minutes, but at least you've offered. I, I remember sitting in or being at a table with a conversation between the accountant um, and, uh. and the fitness trainer and the accountant was just peppering the fitness trainer for ideas. Uh. What should I be doing? What should I be getting? And I could just see he was visually, visibly agitated. And I just talked to him afterwards. I'm like, Jerry, what's, what was the deal? He's like, you know what? You know, the accountant charges for every moment of his time, but he does, he totally dismisses mine as of having no value. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I didn't think about it that way. In my mind, you're just giving five minute answers. Well, yeah, but that's what I, you know, that's my stock and trade. You're right. right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, audience is listening. How, how can they help you? How so can they help you and how can they get a hold of you? I guess that's <laughs> even better. 
So if you, if you want to, my website is tiffanykellogg.com and it's T-I-F-F-A-N-I-E-K-E-L-L-O-G. Uh, you can find me there. I do have all of my events up at facebook.com slash Tiffany Kellogg slash events. Uh, I've got free events and there's paid events as well, but there's all kinds of free stuff there and they can connect with me via social media. Uh, I am easy to find most, I'm the only one with socks with my name spelled the way that I do that's out there active, luckily. Well, yeah, I was going to say before we even hit record, um, I love the fact that Kellogg's got one G because it, 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 I was trying to pull Thanks up all our emails, all our the communications, RX and I did a search on Please that and they all came you've flying learned up. Into action today. Um, I will put, <laughs> let us I'll put your you website in the show notes comments, so or ideas for future there, topics. And, uh, you can email and then I do have an article, it's 13 ways to motivate your That's network. And so if you want to email me, it's Tiffany, T-I-F-F-A-N-I-E-K. So you never miss an episode. Be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast. If you email me, just put Frank's name in the subject, then I will send you that PDF. Now get out and network with someone. Okay, sounds good. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright. Thank you so very much for having me. All rights reserved.